think. Hey, everybody. Uh, we will get started here in just a second. We're going to wait um, a few more minutes for people to tune in. Um, got a question from someone about uh, wondering if they're on mute or not. Yes. Um, all uh, people who are tuning in who are not panelists will be muted. Uh, if you do have questions throughout the presentation today, feel free to drop them into Q&A and we will get to them at the end. All right, it looks like uh, our numbers have leveled off here, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everybody. I am Jordan Schrader. I'm a marketing manager here at Flatiron School. Thanks for spending part of your evening with us. Um, before I hand you off to Brett, um, who will be our fearless leader this evening, um, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, so, um, like I mentioned, uh, we will be doing uh, audience Q&A at the end of the presentation. So feel free to drop questions throughout um, the next kind of 45 minutes into the Q&A um, section. And I will um, be asking those of Brett at the end. Um, you are also um, 24 hours, uh, within 24 hours of uh, the end of this webinar, you will be receiving the slide deck as well as the recording. Uh, so you have access to all of these materials um, at the end. Uh, with that, uh, I will go ahead and pass it off to Brett, who is our head of education here at Flatiron School and um, our resident uh, cybersecurity expert. Um, Brett, I will let you do your, your more formal introduction. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Jordan. Um, really appreciate everybody spending some time with us tonight. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, name's Brett Fund. Um, have been in the education space um, for almost two decades now. Um, was a professor prior to, to venturing out and starting a company called SecureSet. Last year, SecureSet joined forces with Flatiron, um, and we've been doing uh, a lot of good together around uh, our various programs, whether it's software engineering, data science, or cybersecurity analytics, or cybersecurity engineering. Um, and so I want to talk uh, a little bit, obviously, a little bit more about the cybersecurity programs that we offer um, and what, what motivated, um, you know, us joining forces and, and, and accomplishing this great work and why this need is so great out there and how you can be part of that solution if this is something that you're interested in. Um, so to give you a, a quick rough agenda. Uh, for the evening, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how we're responding to COVID-19, right? What instruction and education looks like right now in our company, as well as then go pretty deep into cybersecurity, whether that's the industry, the way that we approach it, our programs, um, how we teach, what things we offer, such as career services, what the admissions process looks like, and so on. Um, I definitely want to make sure that we have adequate time at the end um, to field any questions. I feel like that's, that's probably um, some of the most interesting parts for you, but I think providing some content up front will hopefully answer some of those questions and then bring new questions that you might have. So um, 
let's let's work at that together and feel free to and put those questions as we go along. Um, that way we can make sure that we we answer them as they come to you. Uh, we may not exactly speak to them right that moment, but at least we'll be able to go back and answer those questions as they came to you. Um, so a little bit about how we're responding to COVID-19. All of our on-campus courses are actually being delivered through remote instruction. And so what that means is, is very similar to what you have here. Instead of all of us showing up to a physical location and, and me standing in a classroom and talking to you sitting in a chair at a table, um, we're just all connecting via Zoom like we are today. Um, and, and so what we've had with a lot of our students that are in our programs right now is, um, you know, there's, they've actually, we've all been surprised that, that the experience has is, is, is been wonderful, right? And so it, there's a lot of things that we haven't lost just because we're not physically together in a classroom. We're still able to interact. We're still able to work on labs and talk through, through things together. So a lot of what you have in the, in the physical space, we're able to, to replicate in this virtual environment. Um, you know, and, and are there some occasional challenges? Yes, but there are also some occasional upsides as well. And so everything sort of balances out and it's been great. And we've been monitoring guidance from uh, government authorities when they're reopening and, and we're looking towards a reopening um, as soon as it uh, is safe and possible. Um, and so those are things we're working towards, but um, as of right now, this is how we're operating. Just wanted to put that out there. If you've got questions, we can talk more about that later. Um, so let's talk uh, a little bit more about cybersecurity, because I think that's why you showed up tonight. You're, you're interested in this industry. Um, and it'd be interesting to understand where um, you're coming from, right? And what your background is and, and why you're interested in the space. And so maybe either in the chat or, or wherever you can, you know, provide some of that, just be interesting to, to hear sort of where the motivations are. But my assumption is that you're here because something about the cybersecurity industry is intriguing to you. Well, let's talk about it. By next year, we're estimating that there's going to be an annual cybercrime of $6 trillion. That's just outstanding standing if you think about that like that is horrible for all of us right money is being stolen from all of us in some form or fashion even if it's not from your pockets directly it's from some company that now has to charge a higher price because they're losing money and we end up paying for it right so like in some way this all comes back to us being impacted by cybercrime and you can see we're only spending about a sixth of that, right? So we'll spend about a trillion, but we'll lose about six trillion to cybercrime. And that's doubled in the last couple of years, right? Um, job openings are predicted to be 1.5 million job gap. When this originally was done, it was estimated at only being 1 million. And now it's up because it. we all understand how important this is. Even in this, this um, moment of COVID where um, a lot of people unfortunately have been displaced in this industry, there's still a lot of hiring going on because, um, because people and everyone will recognize that um, we, you know, we will be less safe if we have less people. And so the problem isn't that there's not a lot of opportunity in this industry or not a lot of hiring going on in the industry. The problem is there aren't enough people ready um, and have the skills to, uh, to, to do the jobs that are needed in this industry. And that's where um, Flatiron comes in. Um, there's all different types of career pathways. We're gonna get into this a lot deeper later, so I won't spend much time on this slide, but just to give you a real quick glimpse of various levels, right? And how, um, and, and how there's like a career progression in, in, and there's a lot of different opportunities of going um, obviously laterally, but up and down um, in these various uh, career um, paths that you can, you can choose. 
Um, this quote is from one of our advisors when, um, when I had started this company called SecureSet, where um, he was former director of operations for the NSA. He left government and started, he was the CEO of a couple of security companies and then became a venture capitalist. So he had been in the industry for the last three decades. And, 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 and his quote was, cybersecurity is the single most important industry that has developed in this nation since the industrial revolution. And, and I'm, I don't think that we can understate that comment because what has happened over the last, I would say six years in particular, since um, 2014 with Home Depot and Target, I think the world woke up to the fact that there are serious implications for breaches, for loss of data, for identity theft, for, you know, crypto locker attacks, like crypto attacks, like people are losing money, they're losing livelihoods, they're losing their identity. And this is not something that just affects certain people. This affects everybody. And so what's happened is this is shifting the way that businesses operate, um, laws that are being written. And so it really is this industry that is kind of developed and a little nascent, even though we had security before, it wasn't organized like it is today. In the last six years, it's really taken off and it's going to continue to take off, right? And I think it's going to shift and change the way we think and do business. Um, just looking nationally, we've got over 500,000 jobs available in the U.S., right? That 1.5 number is a global number. 500,000 of them are here locally or in the U.S. And in New York alone, about 25,000. And in D.C., uh, 16,000, right? There's tremendous opportunity in this industry if you have the right skills. And the great thing about this industry is you get in, you get some skills, and then you can keep going and keep learning and growing. I personally am a, a lifelong learner. I love to learn new things. I'm always trying to, um, you know, take various courses or, or, or do different things to learn. And um, the one thing I love about this industry is once you get in, there's no end to the, the amount of knowledge that you can learn. You can always challenge yourself and you can always move and, and, and do great things. This is really a career, it's not a job per se, in that you can constantly grow, um, both in terms of your opportunity and, and compensation, but also in terms of your knowledge and your skills. So it's a fantastic industry, a uh, lot of uh, opportunity there. So, so what business do we have helping individuals get into this industry? Well, you know, um, Adam and Avi founded Flatiron School, which is, um, you know, prior to SecureSet joining forces, um, did a lot with uh, software engineering and data science and design. Um, and then we brought some of this cybersecurity component um, to it. And we've all had sort of the same mission of helping individuals, um, you know, reinvent themselves and to enable a better life through the pursuit of education. Um, and so we've, as a school, Flatiron has graduated thousands of students since it started in 2012. They currently have around, you know, nine or 10 campus locations throughout the United States. And we've got software engineering, data science, we've got cyber analytics, and we, we just launched our cybersecurity engineering program. Um, and so, what makes us special and unique as well is our, our approach. We believe in immersive education, whether that's online or whether that's in person, we believe in giving you the skills <clears throat> and the experiences as if you were in the workforce. So we're trying to prepare you by, by making you um, actually have similar experiences that you need as if you were in the job today, right? So when you get there, you're actually very prepared. We also have wide industry partnerships where not only are we an education institution, but we work very closely with employer partners to both understand what their needs are and how those needs change over time, as well um, as uh, you know, helping our students find entrance into the career fields. Um, there are a lot of different uh, wonderful 
things we can talk about about some of the way this partnership has taken form. But think about those two things. We have both this immersive education experience and industry partnerships that help individuals reinvent themselves and get them a new career uh, in, in these various industries. Cybersecurity is the one that we're talking about. And kind of going along with that immersive education theme, we believe in balancing theory and practice. And so for example, particularly in the cybersecurity curriculum, if we have about an hour of lecture where we're introducing a concept, we'll have another hour paired with it where you're actually doing the concept. So we don't believe in teaching you things if we can't demonstrate those and have you actually apply them as well. Because once you get into your career, it's not going to be just about knowing something. It's going to be about being able to do something. And it, particularly in this field, that's important. So we balance our theory with our practice. So if we say, hey, we're going to teach you about cybersecurity, we're going to teach you about it, but then you're going to do it so that you're adequately prepared when you hit um, your, your job. Typical day. What does that look like? What does all that really mean? It means that you're probably showing up at 9 o'clock you'll have some type of a lecture, let's say it's network administrations, right? And then that'll go for an hour and a half or, or so, and then we'll do a demonstration of a lab. Then from 11 o'clock on, you're working on a lab, right? And you are actually applying what you just learned. Um, you'll have lunch in there. <laughs> then at 2 p.m., you'll come back with a different lecture, and this time, it's not networks again. Now we're talking about a new course, which we'll talk about later. Strategy and analysis. You'll, you'll lecture, then you'll do labs again. And then six o'clock, um, the formal instruction and, uh, is over <clears throat> and it's time for you to study and you can review your concept. You can strategize about what you're doing next and, and prepare for your next day. Um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, a couple examples. So, um, uh, Miss Andrus here, she was in marketing prior to coming um, uh, to our program. And she came to our program in June of 17. Um, and she studied the analytics program, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But she was in marketing, had no real technical background, but she knew she wanted to take her analytical skills and apply them to cybersecurity. Came through our program, on the other side of it became a security analyst at CrowdStrike, which is a, a, a very uh, well-known organization um, in the security field. Um, so, and, and she's been doing very, very well within the industry. Also, another gentleman, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Agape, he was a workforce development. He was a social worker um, and helped <clears throat> youth, right, around IT and technology. He, again, didn't have an extensive background, came into the analytics program, and then after became a security analyst at a company called CyberGRX, which does a lot of um, uh, third party or vendor um, uh, kind of verification. Because right now within a within security company, even if you lock down your own things, if you've got different vendors and they haven't locked down um, their security protocols, you're still at risk because a hacker may get through your vendor, not through you directly. And so there are these companies like CyberGRX that ensure that the vendors are all uh, following protocols so that you as a company are safe. And, and he joined that company, which is growing very fast and has done a lot for them and, and continues to do well in the industry. So let me talk to you about the two different programs that we have, um, because there's, there's a multiplicity of opportunity in this field which could be overwhelming as well as it is exciting. Um, so it's important to know that there's not one way in and there's not sort of just one position on the other side of this. And that's why we actually have two different programs depending on what you're more interested in. And we'll talk about what those will look like, right? But before we get there, let's talk about what cybersecurity is. For those of you who don't have a, a deep background on it, you probably think of cybersecurity from what you see in a lot of the media. It's probably a hacker where, you know, they're, they're hacking a phone sitting on a desk, right? And it takes them like 30, 40 seconds, and then they're in, they're able to listen, they're able to do certain things. And while some of that is real, right, that's not always the day-to-day -day 
of a cybersecurity professional. In fact, there's two large chunks, I would say even three large chunks uh, that we could segment people into. We could say the engineers who are building and breaking systems, there are the analysts who are looking and tracking the through log files and other analysis of like what the hackers are doing. So it's like digital forensics and incident response. And then you have sort of the, the management side of security. So our programs are not really towards the management because most of those individuals have been in the industry a long time. They've come up through one of these other two tracks and they end up in the management side, right? So our programs are either engineering or they're analytics. Um, and so, but in short, we're protecting systems from cyber attacks. And we can do that one of two ways, either looking at the data to figure out how it's been infiltrated, where the possibility is that uh, the vulnerability is so that we can stop it, or we're building or breaking systems um, to make sure that we're secure, right? And, um, uh, and so secure set, right? We, we, um, we started this and we grew it. Um, and then we joined forces with Flatiron so that we could deliver it in a much broader way um, together. So here quickly is that comparison of these two different programs. On the analytics side, this is really good if you've got a passion for research and analysis. A technical background is really not necessary for the program. We'll teach you everything you know from the technology standpoint inside of the program. And this is where you saw with uh, Ms. Andrus and Mr. Agape that they actually um, didn't have technical backgrounds, but they were able to get analytics jobs, right? Um, a lot of these individuals have degrees. It's not required. They oftentimes have them because they've started down some other career path and decided that they want to transition over to cybersecurity. Um, and, and usually, if you've got an interest into tier one SOC analyst or a threat and tell analyst, and we'll talk through what those mean, um, this is a great uh, opportunity. This is a 12-week program, full-time on campus. We also have this um, online and both a full-time and a part-time as well. Now, cybersecurity engineering, people who are best for this program probably have some level of technical background. They may not need to be a, uh, a developer or software engineer. Uh, they could be a network administrator or an IT help desk person, but they've dealt with some level of uh, technical uh, you know, experience in the past. They may not have even held a technical job, but they've got technical acumen. Um, I know for me personally, when I was a teenager, I was, you know, to date myself, I would be breaking down my VCR so I could figure out how it worked and then I'd put it together, right? And so that, I think that demonstrates a level of technical acumen. Um, some people have certifications or degrees in technology. Those are great, right? Those are all helpful in this engineering world. And then really where we're sort of the uh, positions that these individuals will go will be more engineering oriented. Penetration tester, which is typically what you view in the movies, which are these good hackers. Um, those are pen testers. That's um, you know, getting into a network, finding all the holes so that you can go afterwards and actually fill the holes. This is a 15 week program full time. Uh, we don't have it online currently, um, but we do have the full time program. And uh, it was mentioned because we're in sort of this remote instruction um, scenario at the moment, it, it's sort of being delivered uh, in this online fashion, though it is not an online program formally. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about, um, you know, analyst versus engineer. And, and, and hopefully um, you can appreciate the reference here. Uh, I enjoyed this movie. Um, and I thought it drew a great parallel between these two, just to, to further solidify the difference between these programs and the difference in the opportunities on the other side. So drivers are like the analysts, right? They're constantly monitoring data and they're making choices about what it's telling them. When you're the driver, you're going around the corner, you're, you're pushing in the gas, you're pushing in the brakes, you can feel if something's off and it's not handling um, correctly or the way that it should. Um, and so, um, so, so this is where the driver um, aspect or, or, or analog comes in. They, they have to have a capacity to um, 
pay attention to multiple stimuli, to spot trends, right? And while they can't necessarily build the car they're driving in, they definitely know how to drive it. And, and I think about that for like myself, right? I know a little bit to be dangerous under the hood of my car, but really if there's a major problem, there's nothing I'm gonna do about it. I gotta take it into an engineer to fix it. But I can tell you if there's a problem in my car and I can look at all the data and I can give you the feedback of what's happening, right? That's the driver, those are the analysts. The designers or the engineers, these are the individuals that love nothing better but to think about how this massive system is functioning, where the strong points, where the weak points are, how to optimize it, where to get more out of it, so on and so forth. And this is the engineers, right? Instead of cars, it's computer systems, it's networks, it's operating systems, it's, it's code, right? And how all those things work together um, are important to understand because that is how a hacker thinks about exploiting those weaknesses so that they can come to an outcome. And then the good hackers or the you know, engineers on the other side are thinking, how do I stop? How do I block? How do I defend that, build it? Whereas the drivers or the analysts are thinking about, hey, I just noticed this problem occurred here. Something happened that shouldn't have happened. I'm assuming that's a hacker. Let me go investigate. I find out that it is. Now I take it to the engineers. The engineers um, can, can secure the system. Okay, so what are you gonna learn? Um, eight foundational courses in analytics, network administration, system administration. We're gonna give you the backbone that you need from a technical standpoint. Not so that you can go do the engineering work, right? But enough to be dangerous under the hood, like me in my car, but it's really so that you can go talk to somebody and tell them in an informed way what you saw, what you thought you saw, so that they can do something about it. It's much easier for me to go into a mechanic and say, hey, you know, this part of the engine is not sounding correct, or I've noticed this when I'm driving it. And if I can have at least a little of insight of how the engine works, I can speak to the mechanic in a much uh, more educated and reasonable way. That's what we're doing here with those two classes. Strategy analysis, governance, risk, and compliance, and, um, and threat intelligence. Those three courses are gonna be both in the analytics and the engineering. Those three courses are really how managers, this third group, think about security. And so you might ask why in the world would we teach either analysts or engineers about how managers think about the business for two reasons. One, because it's, it's important for you to think about security that way. If you only think about it in your box, then you won't understand how it relates to all the other aspects of the company, the engineers and the uh, managers. But two, we have found that by introducing this into the curriculum, one, employers find it more attractive. They find this very attractive because their employees can speak to them and manager speak, and it allows for opportunities and growth within a management field faster than if you didn't have that knowledge. You would be years in the, in the industry learning those things by, by experience rather than us giving you a framework up front. So we introduced this to you both in the analytics and in the engineering program. But the real backbone of um, the analytics program, as you can see sort of represented here, is course six and course seven. It's SIM administration and hunt skills. That's the backbone of the program. And that is um, a SIM, right? Uh, is security intelligence and event management. It's basically um, a tool. There's lots of different, but they're all called SIMs, right? It's a tool that allows you to um, monitor logs, analyze logs, and write rules and, and other things so that you can um, identify when breaches might have occurred, how they occurred. Um, it basically, this is where digital forensics and incident response lives. and allows you to really be a crime scene investigator um, so you can understand when something might be tripped up and why it was tripped up and if there was a breach, how they got there. And then uh, Hunt Skills tells you about how to set traps that's the other thing that uh, the analysts do is they go out and they hunt and trap um, hackers. And then once they find them, they work with the engineers to get them out of the system or to watch them. Um, but they're the ones setting the traps 
and, and doing those things as well as monitoring uh, the logs to understand when things have happened, right? Okay, um, wanna make sure I'm mindful of time, but I do wanna tell you about the capstone here. The capstone's really fun. And I think a lot of times when people, especially if they don't have technical background, they get into a program like the analytics program. And they're like, there's no way I can do all this. But then they try, they start to learn. But by the end, let me tell you where you're going to be. We drop you into an environment that has about 15 machines, but we only let you know about one. You have to scan the network and identify all the rest. Then you have to, all we tell you is the company's been breached. You're in this one system go map it out and tell us how it was hacked, what vulnerability they exploited, what sort of a package or payload was used in, in order to make it all happen. And then over that period of three weeks, they scan, they understand, they read all the log files, and then they map it out, they find out what happened, and then they write a report, which is pretty standard in, in those exercises, to demonstrate, um, you know, how um, this hack or breach occurred, right? When you go into an interview and you talk to your potential employer and they say, tell me something that you've done and explain to me how you did it. And you explain what you did in the capstone. Most of the time they're like dumbfounded that like that you have that level of experience going in. And, and it's also, we don't do it for that reason. We do it because it's important for you to know the skills that you've gained. So you have the confidence to go out and get those jobs on the other side. Um, but that's our capstone project there. And, and it sounds, it might sound a little out of reach, but I, I promise you having done this with hundreds of students, right? We get you there in those 12 weeks and it's pretty awesome to see the change and to see what you're capable of after running through this program. Um, all right, so let's move over to the engineering program. This has got nine foundational courses. Now you'll notice that this time it's called network security and system security. Not to be confused with network administration and system administration. While network administration, system administration, the analytics program give you the basics so you can talk to the engineers, we expect and, and assume that people start a little with definitely further along in the network and the systems side. Um, and, and we go deeper into the security aspect of this, right? So look in at this slide, you can see <clears throat> network security and system security actually form the backbone of this program. Because whether you're on the engineering side, more blue team, or a pen tester, a more red team, or a mix of the two, purple, right? Network and systems knowledge, security knowledge, you have to have. That's what you're going to be doing and understanding day in and day out. So you just have to have um, those sets of experiences and that stock of knowledge in order to effectively operate in that role. Then you can see we've got GRC Threat Intel in there again. Again, we're giving you that managerial aspect so you know how to speak to the managers. Um, and you can think like a security manager, which will help you in your engineering job. We also introduce nine weeks of cryptography, um, which is really important and something that often isn't taught out there. A lot of engineering um, courses will teach you some aspects of network or systems, but they don't really teach you about crypto. So we teach you about crypto. Um, we do teach you about logs, but again, it's sort of the reverse of the analytics curriculum where we teach the engineers enough about the analytics side so that they can talk to the analytic analysts but not like, like they can go out and do it if they wanted, I guess, as well. But really most of these individuals are not as uh, prone to that as much as they are to engineering, but they need to be able to talk to the analysts. So we wanna give them enough knowledge so that they can actually talk to them. And then um, we teach them Python, as well as course seven, application security and pen testing. So we teach you how to break systems so that you can harden them or make them stronger um, from an engineering standpoint. The capstone here is, again, almost opposite of the analytics. This time, there is a, a network that you actually have to go pen test. We don't tell you what's behind the network. You have to scan for it. You have to find the right port. You have to get in. You have to then 
um, get into a computer and find out what other computers trying to get to different flags. And so here, and then once you do all that, you've got to document it all and turn it in and say, this is how the system was compromised and, and how it all happened, right? That is the capstone here. Um, and so you can see just by the structure of the curriculum and the way the capstones are talked about, how these courses are different from one another, which translates into the type of jobs that you'll um, be looking for on the other side, right? Whether you're looking at data, you're working with engineers um, to you know, understand the traffic and protect the system, or if you're over here, you're building or breaking a system, um, that's, that's the, the trajectory of those two different programs. Okay. I need to really quickly go through this because I want to make sure I end in the next seven minutes to open for questions. Um, but let's just look um, really quickly at a couple different uh, types of opportunities on the other side. And, and, and I will point you to the, the source in the bottom right hand corner. This is a great website. You should spend some time, go look at it. Um, uh, NICE, the National Initiative for Science and Cybersecurity Education, Burning Glass, CompTIA all got together and um, produce this uh, free resource so people could see what kind of opportunities are available in various markets as well as the different jobs. But entry level analyst, incident analyst responder. You're using the SIM, you're looking at log files, you're seeing if there is a potential problem, you're investigating it, and that's really the job there, right? Um, that's in the analytics side. An entry level engineer program might be called cybersecurity spe specialist or technician. You're really just looking at computer systems. You're making sure they're patched. You're understanding network traffic. You might write some firewall rules, um, but entry level, you're doing some engineering uh, around it. This would be like, you know, you're changing the tires, you're doing some of these things, but you're probably not rebuilding the engine right? Because you you haven't had as much experience in that yet. Analyst, cybersecurity analyst. So it's sort of advanced entry level. You're doing all the things that the incident response um, person does, but you're doing a little bit more. Usually there's levels here. There's tier one or tier two or tier three. And what happens is like once an incident is identified at a tier one level, they will you know, do as much as they can do, and then they escalate it to the next level. And this next level is usually that cybersecurity analyst, right? And then they'll go investigate and see if there's additional work that needs to be done. Cybersecurity engineer, kind of like that cybersecurity specialist. This is someone who has a little more um, background or knowledge, and they're able to do even more um, on the engineering side. They may uh, own a whole set of, a whole network or set of systems that they're responsible for and, and um, making sure they're taken care of. Here's advanced entry two. We talked about this pen and vol uh, penetration vulnerability tester. These are the good hackers, the white hat hackers that go in and test systems. They oftentimes um, either sit inside a pen testing firm or uh, purple teams. They may be a security engineer doing that, but as a job itself, it's usually sitting outside of a, in a company that does this on a client by client basis. Cybersecurity consultant. Cybersecurity consulting blew up um, in the last five years because a lot of companies weren't ready for um, uh, the demand. And so they've had to hire external consultants to help them. A lot of opportunities. You can see the various job openings as well as the salaries for all these. I mean, there's, there's just, it, the industry pays well. There's a lot of opportunity. So in New York and DC, right now, we have a fantastic crew, um, Anna, Dustin, and Kojo. Um, you can see Anna is in the DC campus, Dustin and Kojo in the New York campus, but they all work together um, in this environment uh, that we're in with, with some of the virtual to really um, tackle the different subjects. And, and you saw in the various programs that we've got analytic type subjects, we've got engineering focused subjects, and then we've got sort of more managerial type focus uh, subjects. And each one of these individuals has their own emphasis inside of those, even though from their experience, they can span a couple of them as well. So we have an all-star team that's teaching um, and would recommend if you uh, want to learn about them more that you uh, uh, look at their backgrounds and, and reach out to them. 
Um, career services. So our goal, right, is really to help them get and start a tech career that they love. That's that's why we do this. And that's why SecureSet and Flatiron joined forces is we are aligned around this point. This is what we want for all of our students, right? So this is a combination of several things, right? Career coaching. We provide career coaching and it's going to be a dedicated career coach, one-on-one -on -one meetings every week. And we've got a career prep course that we run students through um, near and after the end of the program. And that's this career prep program, right? And, and it allows you to also build your technical resume, what you should be including. And in this career prep course is, um, it's actually customized for each discipline, right? For each one of these programs that we offer, um, as well as some additional uh, work that we call post work where students are able to um, continue their learning in a self-paced manner afterwards, right? Because we should always be learning, we should always be growing. Finally, as you get out there and you network with companies and we can point you to them and, and how to do that, as well as leveraging our partnerships, right? Um, you'll, you'll be able to find and land a job that you love, right? And this is the career services support that we offer uh, as a company. You can see um, these are companies that, have a small uh, selection of companies that have hired our security uh, grads uh, over the last, uh, well, since 2016. Um, so there's there's a, a, a lot of employers that know who we are and what we do, and it's a great um, opportunity to get in front of them. And then we also, we partner with um, a company to provide certifications if that's something you also want to pursue. Um, while we don't teach just to a certification because we teach much broader than that. All of our uh, curriculum aligns to various um, certifications. And um, if you wanted to add that to your mix, you could as well. All right, let me tell you really quickly about the admissions process. So if you're interested, you wanna uh, take part in one of these programs, what does it look like for you? Um, well, it typically takes anywhere from three to six weeks and consists of the following steps. Um, we have this free Hacking 101 course, right? And I think you're here at one, this is sort of an info session, and we hold these um, every month. We also have an uh, online one that's self-paced. Go check it out, right? Um, then you're gonna submit an application. An admissions representative is gonna contact you. They're gonna interview you. There'll be a technical conversation. Well, we'll just, we just wanna understand where you're at. It's not a, you know, you're not good enough. It's, it's a totally, hey, where are you at? What are you trying to accomplish? Great, let's help you get there. And then there's an admissions decision made. And then from there, we're gonna enroll you in um, a self-study pre-work. And if this is a lot of topics, there's gonna be videos around network systems and Python. We're gonna give you all the training. We don't expect you to have the background, especially if you're going to the analytics program. If you have some, great, you'll go through it faster. But it's about 40, 30, 40 hours worth of content um, that you'll go through and just prep and get ready and then your cohort start date um, and then you're off, right? That's the admissions process. Um, so I think we, we covered a lot of this. Um, other thing is, I guess, pre-work does have a quiz at the end, um, but uh, we prepare you for it and you're able to take it um, multiple times uh, if you would like. All right, so I think we ended right on time. Um, so I'll open, I'll turn it back over to Jordan. Great job, Brett, like literally at the, at the minute. Uh, so we have uh, tons of questions um, and some really great ones. Uh, if you haven't submitted your question yet, feel free to go ahead and put that either in the chat box or in the Q&A. Um, so the, the first thing, Brett, which I probably will come as no surprise, we're getting lots of, lots of questions about the certifications piece. Sure. Um, will you kind of speak to which ones we typically recommend that our students get after they graduate and how, how potentially what we're teaching in our curriculum kind of helps them um, to move forward in the certification process? Absolutely. So, um, you, you know, they're this, the, the, like not teaching to a specific certification was a conscious choice. And part of it came from, uh, we worked with a lot of employers and the employers were saying, look, we, we hire sometimes people who have certifications, but they don't really know what they're doing. We'd rather get somebody who knows what they're doing. So we, 
we built curriculum based on their requirements um, to get them this to get the students the skills. But then what we did is we retroactively went back and we mapped all of our curriculum to various certifications, predominantly CISSP, um, uh, Security Plus, CYSA, CEH, for example, and there's others, but like we identified those areas where we had 100% coverage or 70% coverage so that we knew what we were offering students towards certifications or not. What I would say is, um, if you're thinking about joining one of our programs, you're gonna get all the skills that you need. If you wanna get a certification to complement it, I think it's a fantastic idea. I would get the Security Plus, either direction, because it is the entry level cert that says, I wanna be a security person. From there, you have to think about who you want to be on the other side in your career. And I recommend for a lot of times, like if a student knows, look, I really want to go down the analyst pass, that's what I'm going to do. Great. CYSA. Or I really want to be a pen tester. Maybe it's CEH, maybe it's OSCP, right? There's a couple different ones out there. But those are like choices that I think once you're in your career, you've got a better opportunity to um, do. Because sometimes if you get a bunch of certifications, it looks a little bit like alphabet soup and then an employer doesn't even really know who you want to be because you want to be everything. And so that's where we always recommend getting the security plus as a compliment. And most of our like engineering students can walk out in week, you know, at 10 and go take the test and without a lot of other study analytics, we usually wait, tell them to wait until they finish the program to go take that test. Um, but, but like that's, the entry level cert that I would recommend. Um, and then from there, I would say, when you're in your job and you really feel like you know what direction you wanna head, get a certification that puts you in that direction. Um, and that's how you should make your choices around certifications. They should be really professional development on the other side, so. Awesome. All right, we have a question. Uh, in many industries, one of the challenges is getting an opportunity as a newbie. Many employers demand experience. Is that an issue in this industry as well? Um, so if you look at the job posting, sometimes it says one to three years of experience. But the reality is when you've got a 500,000 job gap like we have right now, it's nice in theory to demand those things, but the reality is they're looking for somebody who can fill a role and who has enough experience to qualify for doing that. And that's why we have such a heavy balance between theory and practice, because by the time you graduate, you actually have experience. Um, and so talking about your experience in those interviews allows them to go, oh, great, yeah. Maybe on paper, it doesn't say you have a year's worth of experience, but in practice, it seems like you've had experience. That sounds like a year's worth of experience, what I would expect, so welcome in. So not as much of an issue in this field. Um, you know, like we, we try to be very careful in how we prepare people. Awesome. How would you compare Flatiron's bootcamp program to achieving a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity from a university? Yeah, look, I mean, I worked at a university for eight, seven, eight years. Um, so there's a lot of great things that universities provide. I think the one difference in, in the reason why I stepped out of the university to start SecureSet and now we're part of Flatiron is because in the university, you've got a bunch of different instructors that each define their own curriculum. And oftentimes it's a little more theory than it is practice, right? And it's a great education. It teaches you how to think, it teaches you how to solve problems, it teaches you a lot of things. It's great, nothing bad about that at all. In our program, what we've done is deliberately integrated theory and practice, as well as taken all the subjects and built them on each other and interwoven to the sample is like, we might have a networks lab that builds off a systems lab or vice versa. And you don't see that as much as in a university. So similar in some respects, but we have more control over the overall curriculum and how it's delivered. Um, so I think we're able to do things a little bit different and we push you, I mean, you're working 40 hours a week on this where I know when I was at the university and my various degrees, like, you know, you, you may not be 
working eight hours a day on your coursework. So. Awesome. Um, got a question. Um, if I want to do the engineering program, but don't already have knowledge of programming languages, is there a language you suggest that they begin with? Python. And our pre-work will actually start you out on Python. So we actually have about um, 15 hours. Yeah, no, about 10 hours in that um, pre-work around Python. And then there's plenty of other places to go get some additional practice, but, but we could get you set up for that. But Python is what I would recommend. Got it. All right. Let me see what else we got here. Um, Um, is there any um, sort of common knowledge one has to know uh, before enrolling in uh, the analytics or engineering courses? Python, obviously, uh, for, for the engineering side, but um, anything else that you recommend as um, a good place to start? Yeah, so we teach network systems, network, network fundamentals, system fundamentals, and Python fundamentals in our pre-work program. So to start pre-work, no re prerequisite knowledge is needed, but to start our programs, the basics of those three domains are needed, and that's why we teach it in the pre-work. So we'll give it to you if you're interested in starting our program. Perfect. Let's see. Um, what would you say um, is the most distinguishing feature element of Flatiron School compared to other, other bootcamp programs? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the way that, a couple things really quickly. So <laughs> I know we're, we're short on time, but like yeah. one, the way the process that we've gone through to develop the curriculum, like, you know, every, every six months, 12 months, we hold these curriculum advisory boards where we work with employers that, that hire our grads and we say, what's changing in the market? How is this looking? Um, and we understand what they're looking for. And then we always build backwards or revise the curriculum to make sure that we're meeting the skill expectations, right? Not knowledge expectations alone, but skill expectations. And then we make sure that we have labs that demonstrate both to the individual, which is the most important as well as to others, that they can, that they know this, they can do this. And so what's the most distinguishing feature? We're heavy labs focused. We, we've built all of our own labs. They're not labs you can buy anywhere else. They're all um, built in house and they're all towards understanding and developing skills so that you can be market ready, workforce ready upon graduation. That I would say that heavy labs focus and building backwards with uh, industry input is our distinguishing feature. Awesome. We've gotten a couple of questions about um, what a kind of cybersecurity professional's day looks like um, sure. and some concerns about what work-life balance looks like. So um, can you speak to, to that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, there's two different things there. So one, work-life balance. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like anything, although what I would say is because cybersecurity and just, uh, people are so in demand, there's so many of our students that end up working from home or remotely um, because companies need them to perform a function that they don't necessarily need to sit in the office sometimes to do. They can do it from their computers by uh, VPN in or, or joining in. Um, and, and so that sometimes is attractive to people. Sometimes they'd rather be in the office and there's those scenarios too, something to think about. But beyond that, um, you know, uh, there, there's, um, there's a lot to do here, but like for many of us that are in this industry, we're in this industry one, because we're mission oriented. We like the idea of thwarting the bad person, <laughs> right? Like uh, we, we're very much like we want to defeat the, the person that's stealing from us, right? So if you like those things, you'll like this industry. Two, if you like solving puzzles and you write, like thinking about outsmarting and figuring things out, this is an industry. So 
I say that to say um, there are some people who are just like, they want to punch the clock and that's what they worry about. And then they want to go and not think about work. And, and that's fine too. There are plenty of opportunities for that. But, but like for me, it's not about clock watching as much as it is about solving problems. And so if you like solving problems, this is a great industry. It doesn't mean you're going to be working 80 hours a week at all. It just means that sometimes I get lost in my work and I don't think, see that it's six o'clock, right? Because I just, I, I, I'm uh, deep in what I'm working on. So hopefully that is helpful. Yeah. Uh, we are getting a lot of questions about um, scholarships, tuition and financing, uh, career services, lots of kind of specific things about um, Flatiron School. Um, I just wanted to flag that uh, I'll be sending all sorts of information your way as a follow-up, including um, a direct link to set up just an introductory call with our admissions team, uh, where you can get some of these more specific uh, kind of operation questions uh, answered. Um, Brett, I think we are um, closing in on time here. Uh, do you just wanna speak to, uh, for the people on this call, what you suggest as far as next steps? They've tuned in, they've learned a little bit more about the, each of the programs, what should they do next? Stay curious yeah. and uh, talk with one of the admissions um, <clears throat> representatives. And I would say check out cyberseek.org, see what is out there. Um, you know, and, and, and we actually have um, some blog series, if you go to our blog, that talk about the day in the life of these various um, uh, positions that are out there in cybersecurity. Um, so go check those out. And they also have some student profiles. Go read those. That'll give you a really good insight to what the program is like, as well as what the opportunities look like on the other side. Um, and you'll see some of the different career paths in, in all those blog posts. So that's what I would recommend that they do and hopefully brings up more questions. We also have um, a free online course available, Hacking 101, um, that we, I will also send a link to. Um, that's a free re resource. Um, I, had, I saw somebody asked a question about, is the pre-work free? Uh, so the pre-work is actually part of your course once you enroll. Um, but the uh, Hacking 101 on our, on our website is a, a free resource if you just want to kind of get your feet wet. All right. Um, I know we have lots of questions that did not get answered. Um, I will do uh, my best to get back to everybody or connect with the right, uh, the right person to answer these questions. Um, but thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in um, and uh, you know, taking the time to invest in uh, your education and furthering um, you know, that, that lifelong learning that, that Brett was talking about. Um, and Brett, thank you so much uh, for, for leading us and giving us all your knowledge tonight. Of course, anytime. Awesome. All right. Have a good rest of your evening, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.